Sickle cell is a blood disorder and it's an inherited condition that can cause really bad problems with blood flow so that people get unexpected episodes of really severe pain. In, in the U.S., predominantly the people with sickle cell are of African origin. <laughs> the very first case of sickle cell ever was described here in Chicago. That was in about 1910. There was this gentleman who was growing up in Grenada in the West Indies. He was looking for a place that would accept a black student to become a dentist. And there weren't that many places, but he found one in Chicago. And so then he took a boat all the way from the West Indies to New York City, went through Ellis Island, waved to the Statue of Liberty, got led into the country. But they noted that he was a little bit thinner, a little bit more tired had these unusual skin ulcers on his leg and his eyes were maybe a little bit more yellow than other people. But he's otherwise seemed okay and he was gonna be a student, so they let him in. And then it became the coldest, one of the coldest winters on Chicago's records. And he got hospitalized multiple times for these mysterious pains. Nobody could figure out what it was. They thought it was rheumatoid arthritis, but it didn't really fit that. They thought he had an infection, but it wasn't really that. And then they did this new test on him which is called looking at the blood under the microscope. This is high tech for that era. And what they found was that his blood cells, the red blood cells normally are a very round shape that are uh, kind of like a little jelly donut. Um, but under the microscope, you could see some of those, his cells were not that shape. They were more of a crescent moon type of shape and elongated and curved. And some people would call it shaped like this farming tool called a sickle. <clears throat> so after they described that his blood was like that and he was anemic, they connected this with his unusual pains, his pattern of pains, and described the disease, sickle cell disease. Uh, this is uh, hematology. Over here, hematology in this section is part of hematology, which is a differential area. Okay. So the whole automation system is hematology. If you look at the sickle-shaped cells, those are sickle cells. A patient usually, when they come in, they're in a sickle cell crisis. And we can tell by the uh, sickle cells and the morphology of the uh, patient blood count. You know, it held me back from a lot of activities, a lot of jobs, a lot of, basically, you know, it just tears it down. I could build it up so many times and sickle cell come and just demolishes everything. Sometimes I get blood transfusion, pain medications, things like that, because I will suffer from chronic pain. And, you know, when I'm at home, uh, you know, plenty of fluids. Uh, I would take hot baths, you know, uh, heat pads, my pain medication, and just a lot of rest, you know, just wait till it, for it to pass. For this patient, they need a, a transplant from a donor to replace their, their, their blood cells. So, which means the blood marrow cells are the source of the blood cells. And uh, bone marrow transplants can use bone marrow cells or can take the cells of the bone marrow out of the blood are used to treat or cure patients with uh, advanced blood cancers or advanced other blood disorders like uh, sickle cell anemia, for example. Uh, the procedure, I was in the hospital approximately 26 days. And then I came home for three and then I went home. I mean, I went back to the hospital another 12 days because I had an uh, infiltration in my lung. And then, you know, with the neutrophils being low, your body can't fight off any infection. So, I went back to the hospital and I was on around the clock antibiotics every day for like 12 days. Now the standard way to do bone marrow transplants that we normally use for cancer patients requires chemotherapy prior to the transplant. Uh, the chemotherapy has two goals. One is to empty the bone marrow uh, and second to, uh, which is to kill the cancer. And second is to suppress the immune system of the recipient so the the cells would not be rejected. So it was standard to use chemotherapy uh, preparation before the transplant. Unfortunately, patients with sickle cell anemia have already organ dysfunctions because of the disease. Well, chemotherapy is more toxic and um, there's more risk involved, um, much more chance of infection. We don't use the chemotherapy, you know, especially for adults, they use the CAMPAC. It's a way to give treatment and get the body ready for bone marrow transplant without giving chemotherapy. It's just very targeted, hits one type of cell, just those types of subset of the immune system. You know, then they inseminate the stem cells because if you take, if you get the stem cells and your immune system is up, you know, it's gonna 
reject it. It's going to, you know, you got these weird cells coming in, trying to rebuild everything. And your body's like, you know, these guys, you know, everybody going to be fighting. So, you know, they lower them guys down, you know, lock them all up. And uh, the stem cells come to rebuild everything, you know. It feels like a mountain's been moved out of my way. To, feel, to be cured of sickle cell, though, it feels great, man. I feel like I can do anything. Sickle cell is real, and it's out there, and people need to read up on it because a lot of people, especially of African descent, have sickle cell trait, and they don't even know it, you know. It doesn't, sickle cell trait doesn't, you know, make you sick or anything like that. It's just a gene or whatever you have in your body that when you, you know, your father and the mother has it, put it together, and your child's going to have sickle cell. It's 50% chance. And um, it's a scary disease, man. You know, imagine, you know, having fun one day and you in the hospital the next. And then you never know when it's going to strike. So if people care about their kids and don't want their kids growing up with a bogus childhood, they'll do their homework.